Rome, the open city, the eternal city, home to over 2 million people and hundreds of classic films. But what makes this city so special, so cinematic, and why is it revisited time and time again as a location for major films? We'll begin with the neo-realist movement of the 1940s and 50s. The country was pulling itself together from the ravages of war and this reflected in its films. Whether it's Vittorio De Sica's Umberto D or Rossellini's Rome Open City, filmmakers have depicted Rome as a city indebted to its inhabitants. The stories were real, the locations were real, the people were real. There was a focus on social realism, allowing for the audiences to be moved by characters whose situations could easily be their own. The final sequence in Bicycle Thieves, for example, shows a father after a failed attempt to take back his stolen bike, walk home with his young son within a crowd of people. Everyone is in the same boat and the directors wanted to show this. For many, a film's purpose is entertainment and escapism, so it was natural that a move towards the fantastical would soon occur. Enter Dario Argento, the master of the macabre, thriller and gore. In the 1960s and 70s, a series of writers created pulpy detective novels known as Giallo, Italian for yellow, due to the book's yellow covers. Argento thrived in the genre, creating films such as The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, Four Eyes on Grey Velvet and Phenomena. But it was his 1975 film Deep Red which shot him to fame, using Rome as the backdrop for his brutal stylized murders. Argento's stories frequently featured international leads at the centre of his nightmares. Deep Red starred David Hemmings as a British musician performing in Rome, while Crystal Plumage and Tenabra featured American writers abroad. So why did Argento create characters coming to the city from abroad? Was it the beauty of the architecture and the buzz that the city creates? Perhaps it was the culture. As Federico Fellini stated, Rome does not need to make culture, it is culture. And it was this man who perhaps put Rome at the forefront of Italian cinema to worldwide audiences more than any other. Growing up near the Spanish steppes, this Rome native showcased what the city had to offer visually many times most notably with his 1960 film La Dolce Vita, which features a famous set piece in the Trevi Fountain. Fellini showed a change in times, opting for a more free-flowing and cinematic style. This freestyle can be seen in La Dolce Vita from the start, as a statue of Christ is flown above the city as a journalist films from a helicopter, before turning his attention to the sunbathing women below. Older, moralistic values were being removed from the city in place of decadence and excess, a radical difference to the neo-realism movement. There are many ways to depict the city, such as the poetic finale of Leclisse, in which lovers Monica Vitti and Alain Delon fail to meet each other, and director Michelangelo Antonioni shows us the empty streets that could have been filled as their romance began. These streets tell the story of what could have been in a powerful way, echoing the love stories of other classics such as Roman Holiday. Whether it's a stolen bike, a meat cleaver into a woman's head, or a washed up fish on a beach, filmmakers have been using the city of Rome creatively as a backdrop for tales, both realistic and fantastical for decades, and that isn't likely to stop anytime soon. It's clear to see from the films listed why modern and future directors will want their own Roman Holiday to tell their stories.